Sitting on the northeast shoulder of South America is the Cooperative Republic of Guyana. Guyana is the southernmost English-speaking state of the Caribbean community. These are one monsters, gold dredges. The river is dotted with a whole fleet of them, sucking up the riverbed using huge vacuums and sifting the gold deposits from the sediment. Men in the Caribbean country of Guyana gamble everything searching for bits of gold. They're looking to share in the more than 200 million US dollars that Guyana took in as revenue from gold last year. Mercury is used to separate gold flakes from silt during the mining process. It can be a fast and effective tool, but if handled carelessly, it can be poisonous. Now, miners are required to use gloves and masks when handling mercury. Mining officers visit sites every three months. If caught committing violations, miners are slapped with steep fines and loss of livelihood. Gold amalgam is now sealed in a retort or metal container and heated with a blowtorch to evaporate mercury, leaving only gold. The mercury vapor is diverted into a bowl of water where it can't escape and settles to the bottom where it returns to its original liquid state. This is the land of the legendary El Dorado. Many still seek it, and only the bold will even have the opportunity to find it. First, the land is cleared of any trees and organic vegetation. This is currently being done by chainsaws and hand cutlasses by the labor workforce. The next procedure is to bore a hole in the ground with water jets, passing all the slurry into a gravel pump. The pump then transfers the slurry to a sluice box, which separates out the gold and discharges the remaining gravel. In our procedure, we backfill all holes, leaving the environment in a stable condition in which the jungle regrows itself. We use no harmful chemicals protecting our environment and our employees as well. All our procedures are approved by the Guyana Geology and Mines Commission. This procedure is an old, tried and proven one, simply employing water and gravitational means. There you go, Mr. Dutch. Hey, I think we're on some here. Very few people have ever prospected and dug up a diamond. I'm one of them, buddy. Let us now begin the explanation of the current diamond process. The land is first cleared of all organic vegetation. This process usually takes one day to complete. All of the trees are removed along with any shrub and vines. Upon the removal of the vegetation, the pit is started by boring down a hole by the usage of a water jet and a gravel pump. The man holding the water jet is known as a jet man, making a slurry of the topsoil clay and allowing the slurry to travel to the man controlling the throttle of the gravel pump. This man is known as the Maroc man and it is his job to suck up all slurry and gravel while not losing prime of the pump. This man's foot is always in motion as to not let any obstruction of twigs or stones to not block the hose or pump. This material travels from the suction hose to the gravel pump to PVC pipe all the way to the lavador jig which captures all the diamonds and gold. This discharge goes to fill in the previous pit to leave the land in a condition to facilitate further organic growth. The Moroc man makes certain there is plenty of water used in the cleaning of the drain and Moroc hole. This also serves to help clear the lavador of unwanted gravel in the lavador and allows time enough for all diamonds to settle in the bottom of the lavador. The lavador is first drained of water and then carefully sweeping all gravel and diamonds into a shovel 
and put into five gallon buckets for removal. This process takes a few moments as is to make sure no diamonds are left behind. This is done with a small scrub brush and a little water. Often enough, there will be diamonds stuck to the side walls in the clay and with a little scraping of the sides are necessary. The jigs are uniquely designed and there has been very few instances in which any gold or diamonds are lost from this machine. The lavador creates a fluidized bed in which allows the gold and gemstones to settle. The buckets are removed from the lavador and brought to a shallow pond to commence the process called busting a sieve. There are three sieves of different size used to separate the gravel from the diamonds. Beneath the third sieve is a large batel or gold pan to capture any gold removed from the lavador. As a general rule, the first sieve captures any diamonds five carats and larger. The second sieve captures diamonds two carats to five carats. And the third sieve captures all diamonds from seven points to two carats. These are just general rules because there are nine different crystalline shapes in which diamonds are formed through nature. The busting of a sieve process involves shaking to settle the diamonds along with a spinning action to concentrate the diamonds to the center of the sieve and separating the lighter gravel to the outside of the sieve. As a general rule, most sieves are busted as much as three times to ensure no loss due to carelessness or neglect. Once a sieve is busted, it is given to the general manager of the camp, and he and any chosen others help in the removal of the diamonds. You may observe other dark items in the center of the sieve, which will be carbon, tin, rutile, and other diamond indicators. The rule is to work from the outside onward to the inside with small wedges of wood, which help in the removal process. All diamonds are put into a jar of water, which helps to drop the diamonds upon touching the surface of the water. The dry diamonds are carefully, one by one, separated from the stone and indicators by finger or by tweezer, and this may vary from camp to camp. But regardless, they are separated by hand. In short time, the separation is completed. The diamonds are quite clear, and approximately 82% of Guyana diamonds are of gem quality and go to cutters. The Lisa One Exploration Well discovered high-quality oil trapped in the pores of the sandstone. A year later, a second well, Lisa Two, helped to confirm the size of the Lisa discovery, estimated to be between 800 million and 1.4 billion barrels of oil equivalent. The oil-bearing sands are buried some 3,600 meters under the seabed in a water depth of approximately 1,700 meters. The Lisa Field lies around 200 kilometers from Georgetown in the Stabbrook Block. The initial phase of the field development plan calls for two drill centers linked back to a floating production, storage, and offloading vessel, or FPSO. Around 17 wells will be drilled into the reservoirs. About half of these are production wells, taking the precious hydrocarbons up to the surface. The other half are water and gas injection wells. As the reservoir is depleted, the pressure drops. Water and gas injection helps to maintain pressure and maximize oil recovery. The technology used here will set an industry record for deep water gas injection. Umbilical lines provide real-time control of the subsea installation 
from the surface and deliver fluids to encourage the flow of hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons travel from the trees through manifolds and into flow lines before risers take the fluids from the seabed up to the FPSO. The FPSO is a floating industrial complex continually separating water and gas from the oil and is capable of storing 1.6 million barrels. Tankers visit to export Guyana's first oil to market. By the middle of 2020, the lease of field plans will have become a reality. The development will keep delivering its valuable commodity over a further two decades, providing a new source of prosperity for the people of Guyana.